Hey everyone, there's lots of things we can do with 3Pascal and one of those is to create a little tiny web server and here you can see a web server running, it'll just ask me for my name type in my name, then it'll say hello to me so this one will be an introduction to web programming with 3Pascal there's no external frameworks um, just uh, pure Pascal so, and we're going to be using two units only uh, they are the FPHTTP app and the HTTP route unit. Uh, the other thing I will mention here at the outset is um, while there are also a number of frameworks you know which you can find on GitHub to help you develop web applications uh, sometimes it's it's better to start you know to know what happens underneath maybe um, to come to appreciate what you do have when you are using a framework here. Now there is a um, a web tutorial on the free Pascal website, but I will also mention that a lot of that I did skip over, um, mainly because I looked at the when I was looking at the content, and I was mapping that to what I had in my implementation of um, the Lazarus. You know things weren't there, shall we say? Um, also, I found out that there were some things I could get away without using even. So, I don't really have... So if we were to jump up to the top here... Um, by the way, and I'm not saying that you shouldn't be reading this, and if you are using, let's say, an older version of Lazarus or Free Pascal, then some of this content here will apply to you. Um, for instance here, I have not installed the WebLaz package. Although it might, you know, include some functionality which, you know, I would want in a real application, and I will, I will come to that in a, another video. Also, I, when I looked at the project, you know, the options here, you know, um, there was no need, I guess, to create a HTTP web application, and similarly. You know, there is, uh, if I can find it here, there is no web applic web module type options here. So, what we, so, and like I said, if we look at this particular window here, there's no options here for a web module or a web application even. And, uh, um, I don't have anything in the way of components over there. Also, this one here, you know, is just basically has the appearance, I could say, of a console type application. However, um, even a forms application has that, you know, or a console one even. So, so the real work then um, comes down here at the at the bottom of my main program here, where we basically have to set up some routes define our application and then it runs so here what we do is we have a URL um, when we as a route and we have a, this just the forward slash here and this is becoming our default uh, route because of this tr uh, true parameter here and we you know, tell it to use this particular pr procedure here so for each of the actions in our program, then we would have to register a route. Now, apparently, um, I, I saw somewhere if we just jump up to uh, here, no, up to here. Sorry, um, the pattern it talks about. You know, the idea was taken from the Brooks framework. This, by the way, is one of the frameworks that you can use for web development. Um, Not much to this particular one really here. Basically you have a, a, a URL or a pattern because you can put like a star in there and you can tell it what, that whether or not it is the default route here. So in this particular case here, uh, you can see then that my default route um, or the each route handler uh, has two parameters. One is the request and the other is the response. 
so we can take in the information that gets pushed from the web browser um, to our server and then what we do is process that and then come return some content in the response that you can see here and the content in that in this particular case here is going to be just you know straight html and you can see here also i'm not even telling it that it's you know html or that it's a uh, json or whatever else you know the the application type so all we're doing back here is just spewing back straight html so these handlers so these handlers um, basically respond to our web requests and generate the html responses directly uh, one important thing to know about the, our web applications, and I have split this up into two parts here. In the uh, they talk about an old actually, I'll take you to the contents up here. They talk about an old mechanism for routing and a new mechanism. So in the new mechanism, which is what we're using here, um, here we go. Yeah, in this new mechanism here, they only talk about, you know, initializing a port and then running. Here, you can also specify other settings like whether or not it's threaded and then there are some other settings, you know, further up. This application variable looks very similar to what you would use in uh, maybe for a console application or definitely for a forms application. Um, it basically is an HTTP application which is derived from this custom HTTP application. And then when you look at this um, a little bit more closely, you can see there is more to the application also than what would be otherwise indicated. Um, so for example, you can tell it whether or not it can handle threads and um, you have options here for SSL as well. And I would say that, you know, in our particular case or for this demo here, when just going to be handling HTTP, not HTTPS. And if you were going to have an application, which you did publish, you would be more than likely using um, SSL. And in that case here, you would need to populate those properties with um, certificates, etc. Um, so basically, when the when our program runs, then it will be listening on port 8080. Uh, we, even though we don't need to, we're telling us that it's multi-threaded and then it can run. Um, so is it, and it is running right now. So the uh, free Pascal ver um, version also has a mechanism whereby it can also handle exceptions. It's rather, um, plainish looking but otherwise effective you can actually change it up and make your you know attach your own to it but here you can see that you know we have a pro um, a little program here or in, in this procedure here which we know will give us a division by zero type error so that our um, code then doesn't bring the whole server come to a grinding halt Hence comes the need for the um, something to handle the exception for us. So if we were to run our program now, and I will show you the um, the error. Basically, you can see here the name of the application, then a stack uh, frame or this, you know, stack trace, and then the option down here to notify. If I didn't specify the, um, my name or email, then this part here would not be present. And similarly, if I didn't specify the application title, then that um, heading there would start with a, um, a colon. So, Sometimes it can be helpful uh, to have a look at the uh, components, the variables you're using to see what else can be defined so you can add in it. So you can make the other parts of the application, should they get you know, used, uh, become um, a little bit more friendly to the end user then. 
And that sort of hooks into my previous video about reading the code of others to learn from them. When you look at the code, you know, you can find out, oh, I can do that as well. So that's another thing. So now it comes time to dig into this actual form here, um, which basically is this. This part here. And again, you know, what we're seeing here is that we are creating HTML that gets thrown back to the web browser. Um, and I'm not going to go into too much depth, of, you know, with the um, an explanation of the styles, etc. But just to give you an idea of, you know, what you can do here. So, you know, we're basically, you know, having our standard HTML heading header type stuff here and then we are going to all the code here um, is really is and I'm not quite sure how many lines we've got highlighted there uh, 62 lines I've got for my styling um, and it really is that styling aspect that you know takes something that could be bland into something that looks you know quite nice to the end user just to uh, show you what I mean here Let's um, remove all of the styling. And I'll just save that first. And build it and now run it. And now we go back to here without any real, uh, well, with actually, I should say, without any styling. It looks rather meh. But the functionality here, let's go to here, that this functionality here still applies. And that's mainly because I haven't ripped out what the what that bottom part is, which is a bit of JavaScript. So you can see that the uh, program here, which you know looks you know rather average, you know, becomes a lot more attractive when we do add that styling element into it. Of course you will also note here that I have all of this code uh, in the um, request hand loft, you know, for the form itself. I could, uh, you know, have a response being, I could load that response from an external uh, source like a text file, you know, and then push that into the content. Really what we're doing here is just keeping things simple. Um, and to to show you what's you know how to do you know the simplest way of being able to you know do this now of course then the next bit is that we've uh, next bit that we added in was because we do have this form here uh, we did add in a script or I have added in a script I should say that um, JavaScript which basically um, adds a listener to the submit button so what it will do is it will grab the contents of the username field and then either say hello or enter a name in while this is a, a, an extremely simple um, example here you know you could think of this being also being able to push something back to the web server to maybe add it to you know, to do something with a database or um, user authentication or you know that sort of thing, uh, if you wanted to. And a few things we are going to be skipping over in this particular video here, and we'll cover it in a later one, are things like um, cookies or sessions or database, you know, opening and closing a database and safe shutdown. Um, the reason I mentioned that is because you can see that my program, that the program here is running, so that when I do press Control C, um, the program just sort of like terminates and there's no real cleanup. So what we need to do then is to um, add in a, um, a signal handler to be able to do some cleanup activities properly. So. And that really is all there is to, you know, creating a very basic web application. Again, I'm going to call this the Hello World type um, program. For 
And you can see here that there's um, no frameworks, there's no real magic to it. Um, it's just a little tiny um, application. It's an HTTP um, server and you've got full control over it. In a upcoming video, um, perhaps even the next one, um, we're going to be looking at um, maybe extending this program here to show you about using sessions. Uh, maybe even we could probably use HTMX even. And we're also going to show you some clean adding in cleanup code to. Uh, so if this program was helpful, don't forget to give it a like, share it with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe. And um, for more free Pascal content, and I'll see you next time. Happy coding. Bye.